Hello and welcome to the DV Test Podcast. I think this is episode four now. Uh, we have some very special guests on the show today. We have Drac, the Nerf Vampire, and we have Anna, who is the game director of Endor, for those of you who don't know. So say hi, guys. Hey, everyone. Hey, guys and, and ladies, the few of you that are listening. I think I'm actually at like 5 to 10% of my viewership on YouTube is female, according to the statistics. But anyway... Um, so Dude, we'll- that's solid. That is really good for a Nerf channel. Like, I'm mostly a review channel, and most of my female viewers are moms. So just congratulations right out of the bat. Thank you. Um, so before we get right into the uh, whole end war thing that we're going to be talking about today, uh, let's quickly go through, uh, tell us who you guys are. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone who watches my channel also knows who Drac is, but... Uh, we can, we can quickly go through some background on who you guys are and how you guys got here and what you guys do now. So uh, if you guys want to go do that. Anna, would you like to go first? Yeah, sure. So <laughs> my name is Anna Kolar. Um, I'm a moderator for End War. I work in IT. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Pretty general person here. I've been modding at Youngstown State University since about 2010, 2011. Is that it? Is that all you're going to lay on him? I mean, that's all I got. I'm not the most interesting person. All right. Well, uh, that I see how this is going to go already. Um, I will. I will further introduce Anna in a moment. Um, dar- awesome. Darkest greetings, ner- nerf warriors and foam flingers alike. Uh, I am Lord Draconical, aka Drac Talitha, aka Nerf Vampire, and uh, I live in a constant state of exhausted confusion. Um, no, I, I do a lot of things. I am currently the, the host and proprietor of a YouTube channel, uh, that focuses and centers around foam flinging and our hobby. Uh, it has roughly half a million subscribers. Woo! And so I am very, very thrilled and, and tickled about that. Uh, in addition to that, I am the founder sponsor question mark of, of a few different things, but one of which is what we'll be talking about today, which is end war. Uh, it was, Kind of not something that I necessarily wanted to do, but it is my great privilege and responsibility to be responsible for it. And I am very pleased with its trajectory and its past at this point. But uh, those are my credentials, I suppose, in a nutshell. And then um, as far as Anna goes, Anna is leaving out just how incredibly uh, qualified and diligent she is in all of those duties that she's alluded to. But Anna is a wonderful person, a lovely person, and very talented. She is not only a moderator at Youngstown, but a very capable organizer and leader of men. Aw, thanks. Thank you for those introductions, mostly Drac, but also Anna. All right, so uh, one of the first questions uh, to, I guess, introduce you guys a little bit more um, and start talking about End War is, uh, how did you guys come to be involved in End War? Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, not sure how deep you want to go into this. With, without but... going into the super drama stuff of uh, the, the other event and all that, the people who know about that know about that. The people who don't need to know about it don't. We're good. The event which shall not be named. The 2016 <laughs> mistake. <laughs> well, okay, so I was involved in that other thing that shall not be named. Um... And about partway through that, when things got a little hairy, um, it was actually Scotty, who's going to be here tonight, who let us know that there was someone else who was potentially involved who could help us put on the event that we really wanted to put on, but weren't really able to. So I, along with Scotty, was one of the founding members, I guess you could call it, of End War um, in... (laughs) Three of months the, of the chat room. <laughs> of the chat room. The chat room. Oh god, the chat the, room. The chat room. I like how we changed the emoji to beer glasses so it seemed like we were all constantly getting turnt over the course of the three months while we were planning a game. Maybe. Over the course of three months. Just Maybe. clink. You mean you weren't? <laughs> I mean, no, we we were all 
<laughs> I'm a public image to maintain, but there was definitely a lot of uh, there were libations involved in the genesis of of end war, certainly. Um, and I think that that's kind of. I don't know. Anna, were you finished? I do not want to talk over you at any point. No, go ahead. I'll just jump in if I got stuff to add. Okay. Um, so that's that's a pretty good leaping off point, I guess. I was very involved in the event which shall not be named. Uh, I was consulting for it, and I helped with a lot of the facilities and sponsorships and organizations. And then, like, as the attendees of that event know, like, I... I handled a lot of the promotional materials and I brought in a few companies and I gave everybody super special bandanas. And I was just kind of thrilled that we were doing it. And at first I was really happy with like being hands off because I'm not really, and Anna can attest to this. Like I am not a very hands-on like organizer. Like I want to step back and let good people do things that they're great at because that's the best way to manage incredibly capable, very talented people is to not micromanage them. So at first, I, I perceived that organization to be capable of that. And as over the course of between that and now, it became very clear that they were not. That's all that I'm going to say about that because we do not want to get into the, the drama llamas. But as we discovered that, we kind of moved forward as a new team and a new unit. And so they, that's where my involvement came into play. I brought my uh my network which is more valuable than anything else that i brought into play but i brought my professional experience and my wallet admittedly to to the table and that is uh that's where i guess i joined the fray with a bunch of somewhat frustrated people and we we came together to make something very quickly but ultimately very satisfying i think yeah it was uh once jack got involved there was a group of us who as he said we were very frustrated bunch of moderators from said other group um and a few other people who got lumped in just kind of just kind of to watch the world burn and then suddenly we're in this other organization i'd say within less than a month we had to put together a constitution and stuff to get a group going and i mean considering there were three months to plan a game more or less um i i think we pulled off something really amazing I think that almost everyone who went to End War would agree with that, that you guys pulled off something amazing in, over, in only three months. Uh, and I'm super excited for what we can put together over the course of 12 months, essentially, instead of three. You have no idea how excited I am for that. Uh, we, we have a lot of fun things planned. I am super duper excited about FoamCon which is, of course, like my, my baby. That's the thing that I am micromanaging. But just like listening in at this point and not even really having to guide anything but watching as the game is forming is uh, immensely satisfying. It's so organized. Everybody is so excited to be a part of it. Like just an even better team than last year is coming together and it's almost impossible to believe that that's even a reality. But it is. It's a great team. And we're really excited about all the people who have been applying to add to the team that's already there. Um, some of these applicants are fantastic. <laughs> Chicken. And uh, I'm just going to quickly plug, if you do want to be a moderator, you can still apply. I think, what would you say, November 14th was the end date for the applications allowed to be submitted? That's it. So if you want to be a moderator for End War 2, feel free to apply now. Only you can make a difference. Only you can prevent player disputes, plus the chance to serve under our glorious leader, Anna Kolar. I'm not really good with, like, American propaganda. That, that was a pretty poor attempt, but... You're good. It was it, cute. You're going to get an ego over here. Yeah. I'm trying to. Good leaders have some ego to them, and that might be your only, uh, your only like, lack I guess, is that you are incredibly humble and very gracious. Oh. Okay, so you guys both helped Endor kind of get off the ground and uh, replace that other event. What made you guys decide to come back to it? What, what about the event made you want to uh, repeat it and not just leave it as a one-off thing? Um, and 
I know the event was probably very exhausting for both of you. What made you guys want to go through all that exhaustion again? Do you mean like in general or like mechanically what makes me want to come back? I suppose both. Um, in general, I think that, again, like as per my intro, this is not only my business, it's also my passion. Like it wakes me up in the morning and it puts me to bed at night. Like I love this community and the, the privilege that I have of being a, a voice for our community with the corporate companies that supply these toys, as well as getting to be the voice of those companies to the community. Like I'm a very interesting hybrid bridge between the professional and the hobbyist world. And so like, that's an immense privilege. And because of that, I feel like there isn't a world where this event would happen on any scale where I would not want to be a part of it. Like, even if I was not involved in it, I would be present at it because so many of like my clients and basically every good friend that I have at this point will be in attendance. It would be impossible for me to skip it. And then mechanically I, uh, this is going to sound pretentious and I don't mean it in a pretentious way, but I'm don't think that end war is yet at a point where I could step back and just let it happen. So I, I think that from like a purely, why would I want to be a part of it again? I absolutely want to be a part of it again because this is what I love to do. But then on a mechanical, like from a mechanical perspective, why do I want to be a part of it? Because I'm not entirely convinced it could survive without like my my network and my funding at this point. So those are my answers. So from my perspective, I mean, I said I'd been moderating since 2010, 2011. We're working on that being 10 years or so of my life. And it's become so much of, I guess, who I am. It's where I've met most of my friends. It's where I met my fiance. It's a huge passion for me. And getting to do that event, getting to do End War for that amazing group of people who showed up this past one. Oh, my God. I mean, I think people there saw just how beaten down I felt like I was getting and how exhausted I was by the end of it. But standing there in that room at the end and seeing how excited and happy that people were, it makes it all worth it. I mean, we do it for the players. We do it, I mean, I guess for ourselves, for, you know, at some level. But players, having that experience is, is what makes it. Very well said. Um, so continue on with that uh, train of thought. Um, what'd you guys, how'd you guys feel about End War 1? Uh, what'd you like about it? What'd you dislike about it, if anything? Um, tell us your thoughts on how you thought End War 1 went. I will let Anna go first this time because I'm just going to be all giggly, so... Uh-huh. And is better uh, at critical reasoning, I think, in this particular <laughs> regard. Well, I mean, like I said, we did it in three months. Were there things that I think should have been improved, should have been thought into more? Yes. But in three months, we did everything that we could have. Um, I was really happy with the team, with the mod team. Um, it, it's a group of incredibly creative people who are all very passionate about their own ideas. Um, I think those came across really well. I think the players saw a lot of new ideas and concepts and gameplay that they might not have seen elsewhere. So I was really happy with that. I was floored by the turnout, to be honest. Um, but let's see here. Things that could have gone better. Um, I think everyone would kind of universally agree that rules and safety could have been smoother. But... We'll figure that out and streamline it as time goes on. Um, I'd like, I think this upcoming year, I mean, it's going to be a discussion with the whole team, but the missions, while a lot of fun, tended to get a little bit too crowded. Um, that turnout, like I said, floored me. Um, when we were looking at registration, the whole reason we did registration was to try and get a number estimate so that we knew what we were getting into how many people we were looking at shoving into areas, and when we uh, when we showed up, that number spiked by a good 200 or so players. So it wasn't the smoothest, 
But I think we made it work on the fly. Um, our mods are pretty capable in that way of trying to get things to work when you're uh, when you're faced with a situation that you weren't anticipating. Um, outside of that, I know I want to get moderators more familiarized with campus along with players. Um, just because I know people were getting lost a couple times. Um, we ended up having a couple of events scheduled that forced us into repeat locations. I know a lot of people weren't a fan of that. And uh, I think the one big change that I'd like to see this upcoming year is uh, walkie talkies. I think that was the biggest suggestion that we got in surveys and amongst our own mods. Walkie talkies that will work on Athens campus. It would make a world of a difference. So I too want to live on world of walkie talkies. That's, that's a place that I would like to exist. Um, as, as far as talking about last year goes, I think that primary things that like I received personally in feedback and then looking over the surveys are that yes, uh, there were a few flaws, I think in particular with the game. And those were the big glaring focal points in particular. I did not like how we handled night play. Not that I think that night play is bad because I come from an HVZ culture that like embraced night play and played almost exclusively at night in the dark. And so I know that it can be done, but I do not think that we did it ideally. And part of that was an unfamiliarity with the Athens campus, given that our mod team, while predominantly Ohioans, Ohioans, Ohio, I don't know what the uh, vernacular is for that exactly, but um. <laughs> Do, do you have it? Do you have the vernacular for people from okay. Ohio? Okay. Um, but uh, we had to acclimate to a new environment within days of arrival and planned it about as well as we could, but some of those night missions were freeform and I did not enjoy that. So I want to acknowledge that complaint first off. But outside of that, I, uh, I shook as many hands and asked as many questions as I possibly could I uh, tried to give the players as much face time with me as my body would physically allow. And feedback that I received personally, which is inherently biased because nobody likes to walk up to somebody and say, you stink to their face. But uh, taking the inherent like sugarcoating into effect, it was overwhelmingly positive. People felt like this was a worthwhile use of one of their summer adventures, their gas money, like crashing on hotel room floors. And like as somebody who's been involved in convention organization for a long time and kind of familiar with like con culture, like to hear that from what was essentially a pilot event. Now, a lot of us had experience from the event, which shall not be named, but uh, for, for a Genesis, like this was overwhelmingly positive feedback. And that was the most important thing. I remember saying like at least half a dozen times to my employee over the course of the weekend, he's like, how do you think it's going? I'm like, I just want people to tell me that they had a good time. I know that there are like nitpicky things here and there and that this mechanic is like needs to be tweaked or whatever, but it's too late. It's in there now. We can only move forward. I really hope people have a good time. And at the end, when hearing all those people tell me that they had a wonderful time and that they absolutely would be returning next year, uh, just uh, overwhelming me, <laughs> overwhelmed me, made my undead heart go a pitter pat. No, absolutely. I think we were, I was staying with another moderator. I think, I mean, it, it was an overwhelming weekend altogether. And to have just made it through and everything that I heard afterwards and all the players coming up and thanking us for putting this on. I mean, it's hours of work that a lot of people don't see. So to, to really get a level of appreciation from that, oh my goodness. I think I went back to our host's house and just had to have a moment in a room by myself. It it was incredible. And I don't mean to focus on, I feel like I'm, I'm kind of still in like planning mode right now. I don't mean to focus on the negatives that we got back. It really was overwhelmingly positive. But also, here's one or two things that we could change to make it an even better event in the future. Oh, I mean, Absolutely of course, like that. that's the definition of good feedback. Good feedback is good, but it's also like informative and gives you things that you can execute on. And I think we got in that regard, both great feedback and great feedback, um, if that makes sense. But no, I was very pleased with it. And 
I mean, attendance alone, like we call that the SCNC effect, like jokingly, but I, having delivered that experience to so many hundreds of people, I can almost guarantee that we will swell in 2017. And that's why we are increasing our moderator staff and increasing like our familiarity with certain things and poising to execute for a game that will be significantly larger because I get a very distinctive feeling that with so many people going back, having had that wonderful experience, they will bring a friend, so to speak, or a cousin or a brother or a sibling or what have you. And that is, uh, that is going to be very exciting to see so many people showing up with people who have not experienced end war being like, wait, they put on a skit at the beginning or like, this is going to be exciting. Or last year we did blah, blah, blah. Like that's, that's where we start to get some of these stories that transcend in an isolated experience. And that is what I think is going to make end war very, very special moving forward. As uh, Dennis alluded to earlier, it is not an isolated incident. Uh, Anna and I both feel very strongly about its perpetuity. And I firmly believe that come 2027, uh, I will still be writing an end war check halfway through the summer. So uh, lots to look forward to. Tons of plans for 2019 when we depart from Athens, Ohio and start uh, exploring other host locations. I think that it's going to be very, very interesting moving forward. Uh, do either of you guys have a particular particular favorite moment from Endor? Oh goodness! All right, I can uh, I can try to go first, I guess. Um, go for it. I've got a lot to think through. <laughs> I was gonna say I intentionally don't read the prompts because I want to be like off the cuff. I think that that's a. I mean, if my content reflects anything, it's that I enjoy. And, uh, an honest opinion on something far more than a, a pre-prepared speech or script. And while it does lead to, to, to some stumbles and some ums, um, I, I prefer that. So I try and deliver that whenever I have the opportunity and this podcast fits. But my favorite memory, if I had to pick one, is arriving at the auditorium Saturday morning... And I was busy unloading a few things, and then I got bogged down for, like, I don't know, like, quote-unquote autographs. Like, I'm not really, but, like, signing Nerf guns and stuff on the way in, so I did some of that. And the bottom line is that I was kind of late getting to the auditorium, and it was full when I walked in. But there was a really great moment where a friend of mine from Ohio, right before I went through the side door at the bottom level, was like, are you ready for this? And I've done so much public speaking over the course of my career for, like, different companies and different conventions. And I mean, I, I did an entire speaking tour of like prop making and nerf modding just at various large convention halls. But I always get like a room that can only seat like 100, 200 people, what have you. So when he was like, are you ready for this? I like jokingly brushed it off. I was like, come on, man, I do this for a living. I go to work. And I opened up the door and I walked into the room and like the breath left my lungs. And I was like, oh, hell. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I am not. He wasn't ready. <laughs> like, I remember that moment, and I was, like, buried in computer work trying to get things going, and someone's like, hey, have you looked up in a while? And I'm like, no. Yeah. What? Oh, my God. Where did they all come from? No, and it was so much more than... It wasn't just the number two. Like, normally when I go to a convention and I fill a room with 200 people and I speak to them, it's like a dozen people that I know and care about and a few hundo randoms, right? But, like, looking up into an auditorium, it's, like, really weird. It's almost like graduating, except everybody is there for you. Everybody is a family member. And so, like, again, uh, the SCNC effect, like, a lot of the people who came to this event I feel came because they wanted HVZ, but a significant portion of them came because I stood up and I put my reputation on the line and I said, I believe in this, please show up and support it. And so getting up to like, look out and now all of a sudden it's not just like 70,000 YouTube views. It's like the few hundred people who really showed up and, and made the effort. Like it was a, a very humbling experience to like look out into a room full of people that believe in you. I don't know. There's, there's no real equivalent for that. Like I talk to half a million people on a daily basis and 
they're all just like zeros and ones, but like having to look them all in the face and be like, Oh, hope I'm good at this. Like was <laughs> staggering. Uh, outside of that memory, it is impossible to pick something isolated because I feel like it's almost dishonest to the efforts that went into every single moment uh, from 2 a.m. hiding dossiers to visiting a couple of different after parties to two hours of sleep between Saturday and Sunday because stuff had to be done um, to the various meetings and the phone con setup and everything. Like every memory is so very special and has people attached to it that I could not pick a favorite. And I chose the, uh, the room memory because a, it's the most like authentic in, in my mind, but also it includes everybody. Like everybody is a part of that memory for me. So I don't feel like anybody is left out. Yeah, I can agree with that. And I mean, that room, oh man, that room. And it wasn't just people being there and the amount of people who showed up and showed that they were willing to support this game and believe in this game, but like the energy that that room had and ha just the excitement and the love, you could feel it. And it was amazing. Now, as far as my favorite memory goes, um, mine, I, th I think you stole the one good one that involves everybody, but... There's another one that involved almost everybody, um, and it was mission two. So that Saturday second mission, we all go out, and it's pretty much a standard hold mission. And we're, we're out there on the field, and I had to deal with some stuff back in the room, and I'm rushing to get out there, hoping I don't miss anything, hoping everything's going okay, running through the 10,000 things that I need to run through in my head. And it gets to a point where the humans have all lined themselves up into a wall. And the boomer goes off for way longer than I was thinking the boomer should have gone off for. Until I looked at just how many people there were side by side fronting this thing. And they all fired all at once. And I swear to you <laughs> that the amount of darts in the air blocked out part of the sun for a good few seconds it felt like then we and will it, nerf in the sheet exactly like it was the first moment that i really felt the magnitude of the number of people there and it it, it was another overwhelming moment of just oh my god <laughs> this is a lot of people <laughs> you are all here and you are all having a great time thank goodness <laughs> but there's that or um Another one was, I think, mission four. It was one of the night missions that... Ooh, we're starting to get dark. <laughs> Could have gone better, obviously. We, we've gone over that. Uh, we got to adjust the night missions a bit. But it was the one where the humans had to stay on the sidewalks. Um, and the for anyone unaware... I have another one, but... You, you first. I just remembered another one that is very <laughs> selfish, but I have another favorite memory. <laughs> but so, um, for anyone unfamiliar with the mission or anyone who forgets, uh, the mission was basically that humans were moving through uh, an, an imaginary cave. And to keep the cave from caving in, they couldn't leave the sidewalks. And if they left the sidewalks, the boomer would go off, which would become like a, an instant spawn area for zombies for a minute there. And you could see the tension in people's faces. This is before things got too narrow and it got a little scary, but I mean, you could see everyone's just so tense and so careful and they're hopping between sidewalks and there's people hopping from sidewalk to sewer grate in the middle of the grass. And the, the boomer Tyler was running along and would like stand right in front of someone, get up in their face and look up at them, look down at the ground, look up at them and get down at the ground. And, they're, uh, they're, they're all so freaked, and just one guy, or girl, someone, decides, nope, I'm not dealing with this anymore, and darts into the grass, and Tyler sees them and blows the whistle, and you could see the humans near him freak out for a second after he booms, and then, like, the, just the relief wash over them, like, I don't have to stay off the grass anymore, oh, thank God, and then just a mad sprint. It was beautiful. Okay, so that was awesome. Like, I remember what you were talking about because I saw it through a cracked door because I was being sneaky. But, yeah, I remember that. Um, 
Okay, so for those who did not attend End War, uh, there was a rare treat in that I played zombie the entire game. Well, like 98% of the game. Anyway, so I dusted off a cool 14 kills before transitioning fully into auxiliary moderator role or what have you. But my favorite kill was during the night missions, which is again oh like where I come from. Night missions were where it's at. Um, but during one of the night missions, the humans were stuck on a sidewalk following one of our moderators who was leading them up a stairway portion of the sidewalk, which bordered a wall that was four feet tall, which was off the ground by another like six feet in addition to that. So 10 feet of wall and the humans all started walking up this wall and you could see like blasters went down as soon as they kind of broke the entry point to these stairs, their blasters would go down, they'd start talking, their flashlights would go down and they would start walking up these like maybe hundred steps that bordered a building and there were like woods on the other side. And as soon as I saw that that's how the humans were going to react to this environmental change, I sprinted up through the woods next to the wall and I got about halfway up and there was a place where instead of being stairs, there was a 90 degree turn on a plateau and I waited. I waited until I didn't see a flashlight dip over the wall for like a good three or four seconds and I jumped up and I got just enough clearance to leap over the wall and I killed two girls. Like, I'm so mad I missed this. <laughs> not, not tactically. I didn't choose them. They just happened to be the two unlucky humans that were walking along the outer side of the wall when no one was paying attention. And they lost their mind. Because it wasn't like it wasn't a good kill like you power slid through some grass and they saw it coming the whole time. It wasn't a good kill like you waited for him to reload and then just closed the gap. Like, it was a, they didn't think that there was any possible threat at that moment in time, and they just, there was a list of possible things that could happen in their mind, and dude leaping over 10-foot wall in the dark was not one of them. And oh, so the faces God. were beautiful. And I then know. I got lit up by, like, a dozen people who just started, like, <laughs> they were like, what is happening? I'm like, ah, they're so dead. I... Oh, man, I got so lit up, like so many full autos, but it was so worth it. So that's my other favorite memory from playing Zed. That's pretty amazing. Uh, that definitely tops any tag story I've ever had. Uh, so moving on to next year's End War. Uh, aside from fixing the couple issues that we've talked about already, do you guys have any like personal goals for End War? Bigger, better, um, anything that you'd like to see uh, happen next year? Anna, should I tell him? You should tell him. <laughs> All right. So uh, we had this thread in our moderator group, and I like to joke on some of the moderator things, but in every joke there is a seed of truth. And everybody covered, like, really good points. So I got to it late, and all the really good things have been taken. And I'm sure that Anna's going to mention them, so I won't. But, like, actual mechanical or, like, real goals for, for various things had been taken. And I don't want to share any of my specific foam con goals because some of them are confidential. But uh, so I just posted, I was like, jokingly, my goals for End War 2017 are find more excuses to be shirtless, comma, if unavailable, make more excuses to be shirtless. And <laughs> then I thought about it, and I was like, no, nah, that's a real goal. I'm going to try and do that. Like, I will I will figure it out. Like, so that is my answer. I'm, stand I'm sticking by it. Oh, man. I guess in general, um, we definitely, we've covered, we want to do bigger, we want to do better. Um, it's my own personal goal. I don't know how feasible this is to take all the criticism that we received um, and to not have repeat mistakes or at least to have improved upon all of the major complaints that we received. Um, that would make me very, very happy. 
I don't know how feasible that's going to be. But You make it sound like there were a lot of them. Like, it was realistically very few things, and there was a lot of overlap. I think your goal is very achievable, Anna. Now, it's not going to stop players from coming up with a new small list of things. <laughs> Absolutely. It is every year. I, I think that your goal is very achievable. Not quite I, as I easy make- as my goal, but... Everyone wasn't, like, crazily, overwhelmingly negative. Let me push that. But it seemed like every person, and I'm appreciative of this, every person had their own idea of small things that could be tweaked to make the game better. And I agree with 99% of them. Um, So it's just a lot of small things that I want to make sure happen and don't get overlooked next year because they could make a huge world of a difference. But let me see if I can find, what are we looking forward to at End War? There's a whole thread about it. Remember when I said that Anna was incredibly thorough? Like, this is what I was talking about. I kind of hoped she would do this. Hey. (laughs) Oh, man. Uh, Yeah, so we, in the mod group, I'll give you a little insight. Um, One of our moderators is in charge of, her name's Janine. She's wonderful. Um, She does mod love posts, is what we call them, since... I mean, for the most part, I mean, some of us know each other from Ohio. Some of us have played with each other and have, like, talked to each other outside of the game. But for the most part, like, we got to know each other very well through End War. So, like, once a week, once every other week, Janine will post these mod love posts that are just little things to, like, help everyone to know each other. So, like... Most recently we did, what five films should we watch to understand who you are? But the first one she did was just, what are you looking forward to most at End War? And I think my big one that I said was actually getting down, getting to sit down and like talk with people. I had, I mean, I was insanely busy. There's a whole bunch of work BS going on that I'm not going to get into. That meant that following the game, I had to drive home from Athens, which is about a a three-and-a-half-hour drive for me, wake up for work in the morning, and go. So I didn't really, like, get to sit down and talk with people about their experiences and just see, what did you like? What did you not like? Let me hear your war stories from the game. Like, that's my favorite part, hearing about what amazing things happened to people while they were there. Um, Oh, shoot, I can't find this thing now because I'm talking and trying to search through this, but... Okay, well, don't... Don't worry about it too terribly much. There were definitely a lot of good responses. Yours is super uh, indicative of the camaraderie that we all share. But since you brought it up, Anna, what are your five films that somebody should watch to understand you better as a person? Oh, no. (laughs) Now I have to remember them off the top of my head, because now, of course, I found the other post. Uh, So for me, it's probably Eurotrip, Lost Boys. Um, Lost Boys is a classic. It is a classic. I have a problem with Lost Boys. Anyone who knows me knows I have a problem with that movie. (laughs) I own it on three separate platforms, man. Um, Coraline, which I thought was like the best animated movie that could also fit in. I I don't know. Coraline's a big movie for me. It was like one of my favorite books as a kid. I'm going to throw Harry Potter in there. I didn't the first time, but it needs to be in there. Birdemic is probably an important one, which is closely tied with The Room. And oh boy, what's a the room one? is so bad, Anna. It's so bad. It's good though. You you have to admit. No, it's not. It isn't. You <laughs> only like it because it isn't popular. You're just like. Oh, <laughs> no, that's not it at all. You it's don't like understand. The wounded puppy at the pound that you're like. I know he only has one eye and two legs, but I love him. <laughs> like, I, mean, I didn't say the story was good. I didn't say the acting was good. It's no, the, the the room needs to terrible. be put down. The room needs to be put down. So you're not going to go see the uh, the the mockumentary they're putting out about There's it? There's a zero percent chance I contribute a single cent to that. Like, <laughs> I will be lining up for it. Oh goodness, Bobo's doing the same thing. I think he's flipping <laughs> out. Like, Bobo has signed posters from the room. Like, are you serious? Uh, yeah, he's got like a full shrine. Like, anyway. Dude. I just feel very strongly about how bad the room is. Um, (laughs) Which is the point. Like, the people who love it agree with me. It's an impossible argument. (laughs) They're like, yeah, I know, it's terrible, but... That's what makes it fantastic. (laughs) I'm like, but what? You have to have a follow-up to your argument. Like, gosh. Anyway. um, It's awkward comedy. 
My five movies are Hotel Transylvania, Hotel Transylvania 2, then you rewind them, then you watch them over again. <laughs> I just saw Hotel Transylvania 2. I thought it was cute. Uh, I have been told that the Drac in Hotel Transylvania very closely mem- uh, mirrors the attitude of the Drac in End War. So I was like, that's, that's perfect. Fair. I will, that's I will add that. It's my menagerie of monsters. Um, except we're the monsters. <laughs> <laughs> the kids on the college campus are like the people who have to interact with our HVZ family are the normal people. <laughs> We're like, what's going on here? It wasn't here last week. <laughs> I don't understand, but I'm kind of entranced and sort of aroused. Like, <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of people who are really interested in hopping into the game. It's always my favorite when you're when you're running a game in the middle of like tour groups. That's oh, nice. I love that. Like, I actually amp it up when there's a tour group coming through. I'll be like, do you want to live forever? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a guy who went to YSU who was notorious for that. We would do uh, dress-up days for the week long. And he would always come in a tiger onesie on Fridays. And there would always be people trying to, like, sneakily take pictures or whatever. He this is the greatest. I right love this. Stroll right up to them and go, hey, you want a picture? And pull out his own phone and take a selfie with them. And it was the best. And they were more, like, mortified. Love it. Also, like, a fairly attractive dude, so it worked. Yeah. Well, then. You know, that's the difference between being creepy and being interesting, is how attractive you are. Absolutely. (laughs) On that note. How did we get here? (laughs) That's a good question. Dennis, bring us back on track. Come on, buddy. Right. All, right. All right, so, um, Anna, I know you're not going to be playing Endor 2018 because, you know, you're in charge of the whole thing. Um, no, it's crazy. It's fine. But you are attending PhoneCon and uh, the rest of the event. Uh, you're, you'll have, I'm assuming, a little bit, like five minutes of downtime between each mission. <laughs> Um, I actually plan on making the downtime a lot longer in between missions. If only, I mean, the players, I'm sure, felt it. it. It was a little bit too rushed. People couldn't relax and hang out with their friends, which, I mean, players first, obviously, but, like, it would be nice to give mods that ability to, like, sit and maybe breathe or eat a french fry or two. So what are you guys looking forward to uh, for this event as attendees? Okay, so I'm super looking forward to FoamCon, since that's, like, the major thing that I'll be attending. Um, You can ask Dennis, (laughs) when I I got to go last year, I was, I I mean, I'm still just getting into learning about modding and things like that. I know um, I should probably know more by this point, but I was just, like, a little baby who didn't know what was happening, and I look at my fiance Tyler and I say, "Hey, I think maybe maybe I'd want to mod something, but I mean, I don't really know where to start. I should do some research first. And he looks at me and is like, "Are you kidding me? You're you're in the perfect spot for that. Like, if you're gonna learn how to mod and get the right stuff, this is where you start." And I looked over at Dennis and said, "Dennis, what the hell am I doing?" And Dennis took me by hand and led me around the room and helped me buy all the things that I would need to make my first strife. Now, granted, those things are still sitting in my trunk, and I need to do something with them, but I have them and can start learning. So if I actually get to put something together by, like, PhoneCon, and I'm hoping to God I do, um, to actually get to learn more and understand more of what's going on there, more than just, ooh, it's pretty. Ooh. So, uh... First off, Anna, you do not have to worry about it. Mm, I don't know. Never mind. I said nothing. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, th- don't worry about that. Um, what was the question again, Dennis? I'm just so excited about something that I know that's kind of a secret. Anyway, uh, uh, what was the question exactly? As an attendee or player, what are you looking forward to at this next uh, end war? Oh. I don't know. I don't ever actually feel like an attendee. It's kind of weird. Like, I, I mentioned it in one of my vlogs, and it captured it perfectly, especially since it was, like, in the moment. It was brutally honest. Like, uh, last time at FoamCon particularly, I felt like it was, like, my wedding, right? Like, I spent so long and, and put so much effort into 
like making it happen and making it perfect and making it wonderful. The by the time it was over, I was like, wait, it's over. Yeah. Like, where's I wanted to eat some of the cake. I I would have liked to have had a dance. Like, <laughs> is it? Did everybody left? Come back! Come back! <laughs> like, right. Um. So. I don't know, it's really tough for me to say like what I'm looking forward to as an attendee or a player because I'm so intimately involved in like making the sauce that it's hard to imagine eating the dish. Um, yeah, there's some moments you can enjoy though. I mean, like I, say, I, I, don't, am, uh, I understand we don't get to play like in the the game itself, but like we do get the <laughs> the two minute of uh, brown pants that you get. Yeah, I'm. I am looking forward to whatever capacity of play I I fill. I guess um, last year my decision tree was made very uh, privately, but well in advance, and uh, impacted the flow of my game in such a way that it kind of felt like work and balancing the entire time. And this time I have not yet made that decision. So depending upon whether or not there's like a really good NPC role that my skill set fix uh, fits into or whether or not like it doesn't or depending upon what we need in terms of an auxiliary mod like i'm looking forward to whatever capacity of like in-game play that that my role takes like whatever whatever skin i have to slip in if that skin gets to hold a blaster i'm really looking forward to that awesome uh and kind of jumping into foam con which we spoke about for a couple seconds there um are, is there anyone we haven't announced any of uh, the uh, the people who have booths and that sort of thing that are going to be appearing at FoamCon, uh, but based on your knowledge of last year and who you're speculating is going, do you guys have anyone specific you're excited to see, excited to uh, meet for the first time or maybe again? Um, like I said, I was kind of a baby last time, so like literally everyone's really cool. <laughs> and just getting to go around and try all the different stuff, oh my goodness, some of those blasters were a ton of fun. Okay, so uh, again, like Anna was like a baby, but FoamCon is my baby. So like, it's uh, it's very tough. I am one of two people right now who kind of has the living list of people who have kind of confirmed quietly on board that they will be confirmed and attending FoamCon two thousand eighteen, and. Of those that I know are coming, there are definitely a few who I'm very excited to have back, but I will mention specifically, since like you're asking if there's somebody in specific that I'm really looking forward to seeing, and instead of giving you like a direct answer of like, this is a company that I'm really looking forward to seeing, or like, I'm so excited that this company is coming, or like, this is a person who's a really good friend of mine, because it would be impossible to, to rank them, I suppose. Like, my clients are wonderful, as are my friends. Uh, and I'm very, very lucky to just have such an abundance of them that I can't actually choose. I will instead tell you the story of the one person who beat me to FoamCon 2017. Because I got up at like 4 o'clock thinking that I would be so early. Because early is on time. And I wanted my wedding to be perfect. So I got there super duper early thinking I would beat everyone including the facilities people there. And I did. And lo and behold, you would not believe who greeted me at the door of my own shindig, but 3D printed solid. Just like, what, what an incredible dude to beat me there, coffee in hand, and be like, oh, good morning, Jack. Like, I was just like, wow, how are you this early? He's like, well, you know, I have a lot of stuff, and early is on time. And I was like, that is the army in you. Oh, boy. Like, you win. You win the solid gold Cupid doll. Like, you have bested me at my own trying to be prepared game well done uh so that is that is a person that i'm really looking forward to seeing because they have proven that their diligence and excitement matches mine and that is a a real privilege for me that's fantastic to hear um i think i might have actually heard that story before but that that blew my mind for a second time um so yeah, I think that brings us to the end of at least my discussion topping, uh, topics. Do either of you have any uh, closing thoughts, anything else you guys want to uh, announce, talk about before we close out the show? I guess we could talk about themes if you want to talk about themes. 
I love how you like tease that in there. Like, I guess we could talk about themes. Well, like everybody isn't super excited to learn what the themes are. Like, up your uh, hands. Do you want to know what the themes are potentially going to be? Um, have we narrowed that down to a list that would be manageable to speak on? We have a list of well. I think it's like six technically because of a tie. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right. Actually, seven because of a tie. I am I am comfortable letting the world know what the seven that we are working on will be. Let's do it. So the seven potential themes in no particular order that we are looking at doing are we'll get the 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 most unsurprising one out of the way first. Um, generic zombie or a vanilla game that would be your general infection theme. Um, some of the other ones thrown out, though, are Carnival slash Zombieland, Castlevania, Disney, Dr. Seuss, Summer Camp, and uh, Nick Moy. Had to get it in there, didn't you? Nick Had Moy. to get it in there. <laughs> okay, so now that we've narrowed it down to that list... Uh, do you want to explain how the rest of the process is going to go? So, we're going to do it pretty much like we how we did last year. Um, the mods narrowed the list down to this shorter list of... Oh God, I think we started out with like 30 or 40 different things. But um, I want to say we got it down to three that we let players choose from. Is that correct? No, it was five last time. Or it might have right. been three. Maybe, I mean, I'm, maybe we did multiple rounds. It's hard to say. No, it's, it could have totally been three. Listen, those those few months were a blur. <laughs> oh, um, they are they are quite blurry. They're becoming <laughs> kind of rose colored as I yes. look back fondly upon them. But <laughs> so, a blurry yeah. rose for sure. <laughs> so how we did it last time is we then took that short list to the players and let them vote. Um, anything that we put forward are obviously things that we would be happy with, and. Um, just let them decide. Now, that was done via a Facebook event this past time, which right now is how I'm imagining it's going to be done again. But stay tuned. I will be making that Facebook event tonight. I have been very busy. Hey, I get it. <laughs> um, so I think, I think that that is the plan. Sadly, my Baywatch theme was uh, vetoed. Nobody else was interested in that. <laughs> but trying to get it in good while I can. Don't think anybody can blame you for that. Um, there, there are a lot of exciting, like, reasons that each one of those themes could be great, and I'm really looking forward to narrowing it down so that we can uh, we can start moving forward. I guess in that regard specifically. All right. Well, that's all I had. Um, unless you guys have. Anything else last minute to talk about? Uh, I guess we're going to close out the show. Yes, CNC is working on a sexy men of Nerf calendar. There, I said it. <laughs> Great. You stole our idea. Thanks for that. You're welcome. All right. So, yeah, I mean, what I'm applications are open. Oh, sorry, Dennis. <laughs> I was just going to quickly comment on the calendar thing. It seems like every organization around the country is going to have their own sexy calendar. I feel like that's what this is coming to. Yeah, I but the SCNC has, the, has the most sexy men in it. It's all men every month, all the time. <laughs> little clothing as possible. <laughs> I'm wearing nothing but pumpkins for mine. Mr. Okay, well, October, <laughs> only pumpkins all the time. I think I think they need to start competing. Like other groups need to start putting out their own calendars, and I, mean, I will personally be the judge of these calendars. <laughs> Oh, Anna, you flatter us by even <laughs> pretending that it's going to be a competition because, again, <laughs> the SNC has all of the sexy men. Have you even seen Dennis? Look at the forearms on that boy. <laughs> July is going to be lit. Yeah, no, God. <laughs> no, SNC was a great time. I'm actually looking at potentially stopping back out December. Ooh, I highly December. recommend if no one's been there. Oh, yeah, I mean, if. As long as we're, like, plugging stuff shamelessly, like, End War is incredible, but a lot of the culture of End War is, is somewhat derived from the SCNC, which, while not, like, I've, I've started to feel obnoxious as I've experienced pretty much every major organization that nerfs by saying that it's the best one in the world, but it's definitely one of the best ones in the world in terms of its overall organization and attendance. So 
SCNC is Southeast Nerf Club. It meets the second Saturday of every month in and around Atlanta, Georgia. And it's thebomb.com, which uh, is a broken domain. Don't type that into your browser. It's a good <laughs> expression. No, can 100% vouch. Just uh, if you're not from the South and aren't familiar, hey, just don't sit under trees. Just FYI. <laughs> that's how the drop bears get you. Yeah. <laughs> Those were a great time. All righty, Dennis. We will let you end your podcast. Thank you so much for having both of us. Uh, really an absolute pleasure. Thank you vo- both for being on here. Uh, and thank you, everyone who listened. Um, we'll be back next week with, I don't know what, because I, I can't, the schedules never work out anyway. Um, so we'll be back next week. Stay tuned for that. But thank you guys both for being on here. And, uh, I know I'm personally looking very much forward to End War. Look out for that Facebook event. Uh, you can like the End War Facebook page until that is up. And for There's going to be a events. website. Just like for the, for the record, I'm, I'm really trying here. There will be a website eventually. Go Woo-hoo. go to the website and... Uh, the website doesn't exist yet, Dennis. Don't send them into the void. Go, go to the <laughs> I've looked website. out onto the internet. I know what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen things, Dennis. Here's back into you. Go, I'm more internet than man at this point. <laughs> go to the future website when that becomes a thing. If you are listening to this podcast months after it's been recorded, there's a good chance the website will be up. Anyway. Fair enough. Um, yeah. Apply to be a mod! Yes. It's a good time. Apply to be Apply a mod. Apply to be a mod. Uh, if you don't do that, show up. Bring a jar of peanut butter. No kiwis, please. Oh, God. Peanut butter. Yes. Peanut butter for the mod staff. No kiwis. Zero kiwis. How many kiwis did you get last year? At least a dozen. I ate most of them. <laughs> good. Good. Anyway. Sorry, Dennis. Dennis is still trying to sign off. I'll, I'll back off. I'm done. I'm done, I swear. Click. Okay, that, that is it for us. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, we'll see you next time, and I cannot wait to see all of you guys at End War. Bye-bye. <laughs>